It is noteworthy that the percentage of women who register to vote and cast a ballot is consistently higher than the percentage of the men who do so. End of quote. Repeat the line. Women are not without electoral and or political or, or maybe precise, not and or or political power. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to your daily government and financial news update. As always, I'm interested in hearing your thoughts on everything, so make sure to give this video a like, but also leave a comment giving your thoughts on everything that is currently going on. Okay, so today marks the one year and one day anniversary mark of President Biden telling the American people that it was highly unlikely the Taliban would take over Afghanistan. Just one month later, it happened. Is the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan now inevitable? No, but the likelihood there's going to be the Taliban overrunning everything and owning the whole country is highly unlikely. Your own intelligence community has assessed that the Afghan government will likely collapse. That is not true. They clearly have the capacity to sustain the government. Do you see any parallels between this withdrawal and what happened in Vietnam with some people feeling... With None whatsoever. Her? There's going to be no circumstance where you see people being lifted off the roof of a embassy in the, of the United States from Afghanistan. In some other news, the Labor Department showed on Friday that employers added 372,000 jobs in June, and the unemployment rate held steady at 3.6% for the fourth month in a row. Even though job gains have slowed since the first third of the year, when employers were adding nearly 500,000 jobs per month on average, economists say a slowdown isn't exactly surprising, given that the U.S. has replaced most of the jobs lost during the pandemic. Additionally, wages are also up as the average wages in June were 5.1% higher than one year ago. Of course, considering inflation rose by 8.6% year over year for the month of May, workers would have actually seen a wage decrease of 3.5%. Here is former Moody's economist John Lonsky saying just that, that wages are lagging inflation, which leads to hurting consumers. Now, of course, this brings us back to the point where wages are lagging inflation. The purchasing power of incomes is declining, and that will eventually take its toll of consumer spending, and that is where we run into a recession. At the end, Lonsky mentions the possibility of a recession. Well, we may very well be in one right now, as the definition of a recession is two straight quarters of negative GDP growth. In the first quarter of this year, we experienced negative GDP growth. Once the report for the second quarter comes out, if it's negative once again, that means we'll be in a recession. And so things really aren't looking too good for the U.S. economy right now. Here is the former economic advisor for Barack Obama, Jason Furman, saying that inflation may actually only get worse. But you look at the inflation data, and inflation has been shifting from goods to services. That's concerning because services inflation tends to be uh, you know, more stable, uh, more inertial. You look at things like trimmed mean or median inflation, those have actually been picking up. Um, even while some other measures have come down. So when I look at the price data, yeah, all the volatile stuff had been raising the inflation rate to 8, 9, 10 percent. Um, that's going away. But all the underlying core stuff, that might be hardening um, and getting worse. In some other news, in a report released by Customs and Border Protection, they announced that they found no evidence whatsoever that any agent struck, intentionally or otherwise, any migrant with their reins. Likewise, OPR investigators determined that the agents involved in the Del Rio activity were not carrying whips. The third area focused on the individual actions of the agents. Despite initial appearances, after a careful review and analysis of videos, photos, and eyewitness accounts. This included an interview with a photographer on the scene and other members of the media. OPR found no evidence Border Patrol agents involved in this incident struck any person with their reins intentionally or otherwise. Prior to this, both Biden and Harris were falsely accusing the agents without proof of them doing so. To see people treat it like they did, horses really running them over, people being strapped. It's outrageous. I promise you those people will pay. I was 
outraged by it. I, it was horrible and, um, and, and deeply troubling, and there needs to be consequence and accountability. Uh, those officers are on administrative duties. They are not performing their, their typical law enforcement duties. They will be an investigation underway now, and there will be consequences. It also evoked images of some of the worst moments of our history where that kind of behavior has been used against the indigenous people of our country has been used against African Americans during times of slavery. The horrific video of the CBP officers on, horse, on horses using brutal and inappropriate measures against innocent people. It's an embarrassment, but it's beyond an embarrassment. It's dangerous. It's wrong. It sends the wrong message around the world. It sends the wrong message at home. It's simply not who we are. To the Customs and Border Protection Commissioner, Chris Magnus, it wasn't at all surprising that Biden would smear the agents. I wanted to ask, given the very strong statements that the president and the vice president said at the time of this incident, including uh, the president's uh, promise that the agents would be punished, how is it possible for the uh, OPR to conduct uh, an independent investigation? Um, was there any, did they, did they uh, come under any pressure from these statements? So let me let me frame it a minute like this. I, I've been a police chief um, over the last 20 some years, and during that time, um, I've certainly dealt with many high profile controversies, incidents, things involving my officers that didn't look great initially. And um, it was inevitable, certainly not surprising that there was going to be a reaction to that from the community, from those in the media, from elected officials, from different advocacy groups. Not at all surprising. In some other news, before President Biden headed off to his beach house in Delaware to celebrate his weekend while Americans struggle to keep afloat, he made sure to sign an executive order to protect access to baby murdering mills. Thanks in part to large amounts of pressure from Democrats, the president signed the executive order, which essentially will direct the Health and Human Services to increase access to medication abortion, contraception, and reliable and accurate education about abortions. In the challenge from the court to the American women and men, this is a nation. The challenge is go out and vote. Well, for God's sake, there's an election November. Vote. Vote, vote, vote. Consider the challenge accepted, court. But in the meantime, I'm signing this important executive order. Vote the American people will, Mr. President. But thankfully, they won't be voting for the candidates you're supporting. Already, in some other news, even though the monthly child tax credit payments of $250 to $300 expired last year, now they're yet back again on the table with some support from Republicans. In a bill started by Republican Senator Mitt Romney and co-sponsored by Richard Burr and Steve Daines, they would send monthly payments of $250 or $350, depending on the age of the child. The bill is called the Family Security Act 2.0 and would send parents $350 per month for each child under the age of 6 and $250 per month for children ages 6 to 17. Now, the plan also proposes that pregnant mothers receive an extra $2,800 or $700 per month for the last four months of their pregnancy. At the moment, the child tax credit is just $2,000 per child, so this would increase that amount by more than double for young children and still be a good bit more for school-aged children. Now, I have to say it's actually pretty surprising to see such a bill from Republicans given their lack of support for stimulus checks because of inflation. So let me know in the comment section below, are you personally a fan of this bill? Would you like to see it pass? And how would receiving an extra $250 to $350 every single month help you raise your children? Okay, so now moving on to some money news where the three major indexes ended Friday in the red with the S&P 500 down 0.08%, the Dow Jones also down slightly 0.15%, and the NASDAQ down 0.08%. Over the course of the week, stocks did make up some ground though as the S&P 500 gained over 3% over the past five trading days and the NASDAQ gained 2.79%. So with that said, if you would like to take advantage of a current offer, 
I am currently partnering up with Webull to give you six free stocks. So in the comment section below, I will make sure to pin a comment with a link where you can earn six free stocks from Webull. Now, once you open your account, you'll receive the first two stocks. Then once you open your account, you'll have to make a deposit of at least one penny. At that point, you'll then receive the other four stocks again at no cost to you. On top of that, if you activate Webull Crypto and complete at least one trade, you'll also be able to claim $5 of Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency of your choosing. But on that note, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. If you enjoyed the content in today's video and you would like to see more like it, I would encourage you to give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and also make sure to ring the notification bell. That way you will be the very first to be notified when I do release future videos. And until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day ahead and I'll see you in the next video.